हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम वेलकम टू द चैनल एंड वेरी वेलकम टू दिस प्लेलिस्ट इन विच वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द सेकंड चैप्टर ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन एंड सेंसर्स अप अपिल नाउ वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेंसर्स इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन टेक्निक्स एंड देयर एप्लीकेशंस वी हैव आल्सो डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द अनसर्टेनिटीज इन मेजरमेंट वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ एरर्स and we have discussed about how we can eliminate these type of errors but today i'm going to discuss about one of the most important things and uh, one of the things which we neglect a lot which is planning and monitoring of a sensor not only installation not only mo- uh, uh, not only pre monitoring but monitoring overall from uh, starting from uh, before the installation of the sensor while installing and then later on while the sensor is in the operation you require to continuously monitor your sensor and you have to plan it accordingly that your sensor does not uh, does not get saturated or it does not uh, does, uh, does not gets too much tall on it right so in order to make sure that your sensor is not uh, overdoing it or underdoing it you have to plan the working of sensor accordingly and that is what we are going to discuss today so there are different aspects which affect the life of a sensor and uh, for that today we are going to use the example of the vision uh, vision sensors we might include cameras and some other vision sensors but basically we are using the example of vision sensors today so the the sensor will use different type of uh, uh will uh, use different type of equipments and sense different type of data but the characteristics or uh, the methodology based on uh, planning and controlling may remain same and the aspects which affect the life of the sensor itself also not uh, change also will not change very much so let's see them one by one so first is the life cycle mach- management or lcm which has the ultimate goal of uh, integrating the fabrication and customer use periods in order to create the birth and death concept of the product design and there are three major considerations which are pushing the implementation of lcm or life cycle management first of them is going to be the reduction in operating cost through optimizing maintenance prod- procedure and avoidance of premature component replacement second is going to be enhanced product safety in the face of the product liability requirement and third is going to be product life extension each three of them has their separate importance which uh, you might understand discussing today's class so first let's take the first one reduction uh, reduction in operating cost through optimizing maintenance okay because if you optimize the maintenance then the operating cost of sensor will remain optimum or minimum but if you don't maintain your sensor uh time by time let's uh, take an example for the water purifier sense uh, water purifier okay if you keep uh, purifying uh, water without uh, uh without giving it maintenance then there will be uh, there will be a time when your water purifier will not work properly right or it uh, might will not deliver uh, the water as pure as it was serving you earlier why because lack of maintenance so you have to uh, keep maintaining your sensor which will reduce the operating cost because if it doesn't happen then you might have extra cost same things happens with air conditioners as well right if you keep uh, maintaining them then reduction will not uh, 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 the reduction of the operating cost 
will take place there okay because if you maintain them properly if you keep servicing your uh, ac time to time then the light will 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 be less and the air uh, which will be circulated by air conditioner will be better but if it doesn't then the it will affect your uh, the light uh, it will affect your light bill and even the quality of the air served by air conditioner then enhanced product safety in the face of product liability requirements and we have the product life extension as well both of them pro performs major part then we have four uh, disparate uh, disparate uh, applications condition monitoring equipment control and condition and monitor monitoring of aeronautical jet engines with they have given examples here structural monitoring test prototypes and structural monitoring during operation these four components are uh, discussed here and they were considered the example of a uh, um, jet engine so we might uh, not uh, consider the example same example but you can uh, understand the heart of it because it is going to remain the same so first one is the condition monitoring of equipment and uh, as you can see the pro preventive maintenance is uh, commonly employed in industry to reduce the probability of equipment failure and uh, in line with the approach maintenance uh, maintenance action are typically scheduled on basis of operative time without uh, the regard to whether the equipment actually needs specific maintenance or uh, it does not or it uh, requires a repair so condition monitoring is a more intelligent approach which detects the uh, impending problems very early and uh, there is enough to allow the corrective maintenance actions to be prioritized and scheduled during uh, non critical time periods properly designed and implement such systems can reduce the uncertainty or un unnecessary work and it will allow the con uh, <coughs> concentration of the most important maintenance and repair actions so in uh, typical con uh, typical installation design what happens components which are required to be monitored are identified and then measurement points are designed right sensors and specif uh, spe sensors are specified in the terms of functional requirement so that the variety of sensor op options are available and this open architectural system is based on the premise that suitable sensors are commercially available so you must have to take care of that thing as well and these systems typically employ sensors that are targeted one or more equipments uh, degradation modes so they uh, then they can uh, provide early warning of an uh, approaching problem when sign of the degradation are uh, begin to appear okay so the condition monitoring requires the uh, periodic policy of the sensor and analysis of the data which will increasingly the analysis facilitated by the computerized expert systems as well and the basic assessment compares the value of the parameter with an established alarm level and a higher level of uh, analysis examines the trend line trend line of the data to estimate when future maintenance action may be necessary or not so in addition an automated uh, diagnostic tool can uh, aid the determining the root cause of the equipment problem accuracy and can be enhanced by using the reading from multiple sensors then we have the control and conditional monitoring of uh, aeronautical jets which we are not going to uh, see today because uh, that is not uh, part of our syllabus next one is the structural monitoring and during uh, monitoring during validation testing so sometimes what happens the particularly dif uh, difficult sensing needs 
needs arise during the development of the testing program so so that the so that it is necessary to validate an uh, innovative engineer design of equipment and when the overall program involves public safety concerns as well as the expenditure of the considerable resources then there is a higher heightened interest in uh, ensuring that design is correct so if uh, design models are put uh, in front of you the design models offer a list of the parameters that should be uh, monitored to validate the design assumptions and calculations and these in turn establishes a sensor requirement so frequently there are multitude of sensor ca candidates and none of uh, which exactly fits the bill also as an example of the sensor uh, sensor needs during a development program the nasp or uh, national aerospace plane program is a joint joint effect or joint effort of uh, us uh, air force and the national aeronautical and space administration had a uh, advanced far enough to planning for the flight safety validation testing critical uh, airframe components has uh, was uh, initiated as well right in america so we are not going to discuss about that as well because uh, we don't have uh, much to do with that now let's move forward to the structural uh, health monitoring so the structural health monitoring involves the evaluation of the structure capability to carry useful load the structural health monitoring is being given uh, greater emphasis on result of the interest in uh, extending the life of the equipment and the facilitates as long as possible so this evaluation can be done passively uh, like uh, through reflections or distortion measurements or actively through analyzing ultrasonic response right one of the examples is that or you can use uh, the interference method as well in which you examine the time history of the uh, time history of uh, the load cycle or whatever uh, thing you want to measure and of these techniques the active approach is the most uh, desirable because the signal to noise ratio of the measurement are typically high uh, if you don't know about signal to uh, noise ratio it's uh, no need to worry because you you if you are from ec background then you might uh, have an idea about it if you are working on a satellite communication or something you might have an idea about it but if you are from civil engineering background then it is completely okay to not know about the signal to noise ratio in detail so they are typically high and sensors can target the critical areas where precursors uh, precursors to serious damage or failure are expected to originate on the other hand this uh, approach typically adds cost and complexity to the structure design and it would benefit uh, the benefits would not uh, occur until uh, later in the life cycle so monitoring the integrity of the structures is a high is a high interest application of the technology and uh, early detection of the fatigue cracks in the metallic structure can allow the relative inexpensive repair to be made rather than replacing on uh, extensively repairing uh, repairing structural components in the case of the aircraft or uh, bridges the cost of replacement in terms of capital cost and loss of uses is extremely high and patch type repairs are universally made so once the repairs are made the continued monitoring can provide a high degree of the confidence in continuing structure integrity so how to effectively monitor the degradation of the structure is currently uh, an active area of the research with many different sensors appro approaches under exploration and several of the approaches are discussed here as well let's discuss this one approach only once the air force has a requirement to repair the fatigue cracks in aluminum structure and components of c130 transport aircraft so a current repair process uh, uses the composite uh, 
boron epoxy patch and after repair the component strength greatly exceeds that the original aluminum structure but if the epoxy interference we uh, weakens or uh, uh, delaminates over time the patch effectiveness can effectively degrade to the point of the uselessness and the air force must therefore uh, assess the integrity of this patch over an uh, expected 20 year life si uh, lifetime so you can see the scheme in the image here the example sensor technologies are described here as well this is the embedded sensor in the composite repair section as you can see here is the sensor arrays the patch is visible over here this is the cracked structure the data readout and display will be uh, taken through here it will be a bi-directional way and it will be attached uh, attachment of uh, encapsulated microcontrollers will take place somewhere here okay and also they have mentioned what uh, a pitch should do what a pitch must do and what pitch incorporates to do so you can check out that as well then let's see smart materials and structures now so smart materials and structures how do you define them so they are defined in the literature in many different ways Smart materials are primarily distinguished by being able to perform both sensing and actuating functions. And uh, one of the, from one of the books, they have provided the definition of the degree of intelligence of the smart materials. Like uh, passive smart material responds to the external change without external control. But an actively smart material utilizes a feedback loop, enabling them to function like a cognitive response through an actuator circuit then you have very smart material which uh, senses a change in the environment and responds by altering one or more of their uh, property coefficients turning their sensing and actuating capabilities which means material with a built-in uh, learning functions are smarter than those without learning functions then you have the intelligent uh, material intelligence uh, which integrates the sensor and actuator functions with the control system. So this uh, successful engineering is ultimately measured by the ability of the structure or component to perform its intended function without failure. And uh, uh, more than often these structures are operated in environment that are that uh, environments that are not fully known or defined in the beginning. So, what is the traditional design practice that uh, the use of the philosophy of the depth uh, defense in the depth which dictates that the system incorporates numerous reinforcements redundant subunits and backup systems that are mass and cost to ensure that add mass and cost to ensure the safety in uncertain environment which will typically result in a conservative design that require considerable human effort to uh, postulate and analyze all possible co contingencies that application of more resources that then required the to implement the structure and the consumption of the additional energy to produce the maintenance uh, maintain the structure produce and maintain the structure so the ultimate goal of intelligent material system is to be able to adapt to an unpredictable operational environment and in the long term the condition, uh, conditional depth uh, defense in depth design philosophy could become outmoded as well but the significant effort in developing these theories or simulations and hardware implementations for the control of machineries uh, will be discussed in uh, upcoming chapters by us they have spread the development of the smart structure and modern control approaches including adaptive control neural network genetic algorithms are finding widespread uses nowadays however the tremendous number of sensors actuators which are associated uh, uh, power sources 
that are required for smart structures do not uh, lend themselves for conventional or uh, centrally processed computer architecture a distributor ar architecture appears to have significant advantage in further discussion of the actuator and signal processing the communication and control is beyond the scope of the present report or the present syllabus of ours either ways now the sensing is a critical function with a smart material system and structure so the damage control vibration damping uh, acoustic attenuation and intelligent processing all required accurate information which is provided by the sensor to describe the state of the structure so the sensing capabilities can be added by externally attaching the sensor or uh, by incorporating them with the structures material during manufacture so sensing the material is used for the purpose in the which will include the optical fiber and piezoelectric material which are possibly in conjunction with the ta uh, tagging particles and uh, optical uh, let's discuss some of the uses of it optical fibers can be used to either uh, extrinsically or intrinsically in sensing uh, when we use it extrinsically the optical fiber is not itself a sensor it merely transmits the light and uh, in intrinsic signal it relies on the changes in the light transmitted ch uh, characteristics of the optical fiber so the use of the optical fiber to perform intrinsic uh, sensing in a smart structure was first uh, investigated in 1979 at uh, national Aer aeronautical and space administration langley research center in america and in that early uh, research they found out that the optical fiber uh they found out that the simple uh, optical fiber were used to measure the strain in low temperature composite materials so the work in the smart skin provided uh, provided a catalyst for the development of the various uh, variety of uh, fiber optic sensors infor infrometric uh, refractor uh, refractometric black body in event sent model domain and time domain sensor were investigated for the use of the non uh, non destruct uh, non destructive material evaluations and in service structure health monitoring uh, damage uh, damage detection evaluation and composite cure monitoring researchers are uh, examining the use of the fiber optic sensors and uh, magnetic field sensors deformation and vibration sensors accelerometer sensors in the uh, population systems so all this is uh, being used in resistance to uh, adverse the environment and uh, immunity to noise from electrical and magnetic uh, distur disturbances are among the many advantages of fiber optics then they have discussed about the piezoelectric i uh, am not discussing about piezoelectric in detail as we are running out of time here so let's quickly move to the next one which is sensor material development opportunities in structural monitoring and controls in so the technologies that required for uh, structural monitoring and control is uh, still evolving and it's still in the evolving phase so sensors constitute at an uh, enabling technology as do the other uh, elements of the system and such as computer processing actuators and controls are uh, examples of it sensor technology can be viewed as uh, falling into one or one of four categories listed here as you can see first is the proven of the shelf and uh, commercially available with no issues at all second one is the proven but requiring valid validation in the service environment over the extended operation envelope okay uh think of it like uh, if you had a startup and you made a vehicle electric vehicle but you are yet to get the permission of that electric vehicle to get on the road from the government itself so this will be uh, related to that uh, second uh, uh, second option third one is the new concept currently undergoing laboratory development pretty simple which means you are in the prototype stage and fourth is the new concept proposed with the underdetermined applicability undetermined applicability and difficulty in implementation it means you have just proposed an idea okay you can see the whole thing 
as a startup idea or the thing of uh, uh, you can see as a see it as a startup idea or the procedure of being an entrepreneur first you have an idea then you try to make uh, try to implement them then you uh, develop your product once you develop your product you need a permission of government to sell that uh, and once you can sell that then it will be proven official community or uh, commercial uh, commercially available product you see that uh, these terms in uh, that way and uh, for the near term the critical issue are engineering related and uh, for any even measurement requirement that uh, typically arises for conditional monitoring there usually are uh, great many sensing options from uh, uh, categories 1 or 2 above so a critical challenge is is to assess the difficult uh, or different options against the requirements so that the most appropriate selection can be made and uh, for that they have taken the uh, example of lcm again lcm which we discussed earlier in the in the beginning of the uh, lecture so lcm has somewhat uh, different requirements for sensor than uh, those who are uh, associated with the manufacturing process and the most challenging addition of the additional uh, sen uh, challenging additional sensor need for uh, in service monitoring related to the uh, related are in these three areas which i'm going to mention now first would be the requirement for very long sensor lifetime with high reliability second one sensor information displays uh, in user friendly format like uh, the speedometer of your uh, vehicle and third sensor product integration L th think of an example of an uh, electric vehicle uh, or the autonomous vehicle which will require the integration of multiple products multiple sensors so the lifetime of the sensor used in manufacturing operations can be relatively short and uh, frequent opportunities normally exist for uh, sensor calibration maintenance and reliability checks and in contrast in service performance monitoring sensor must have the lifetime that exceeds that of the product that can uh, translate into 10 uh, tens of uh, years of reliable and maintenance free uses in the uncontrolled environment and despite uh, despite the use of uh, accelerated uh, aging test there is a lack of confidence regarding the sensor performance over a lifespan of 20 years or longer and as a result the development focus on the sensor supplies uh, suppliers is uh, beginning to uh, change from uh, one dominate uh, one dominated by sensing and resolution enhanced to issue long term reliability and calibration however this challenge is strategy uh, this change in strategy is not easy to make and uh, particularly uh, con uh, considering the fact that uh, the typical major development uh, uh, developers are suppliers of the sensors are small business supporting niche market applications about half of all the commercially available sensors have been filled within the last five years and these long term reliability track record is incomplete yet so the major problem encountered in lcm is that the lack of uh, field experience in the uh, use of many relevant sensors and sensors in the manufacturing environment are typically used by skilled personnel in the relatively controlled settings but once the product is sold the sensor re uh, readout must be re uh, readily interpreted by maintenance technicians who may be relatively unfamiliar with the particular sensor so there is a general concern about the avoidance in avoiding the interference of sensor with the performance of the product for instance if the sensor is embedded in a structure and the degradation of structural strength could result uh, by that the sensor may also become the detaching dur uh, detached during the service reducing the effective possible causing the total failure of a sensor so design approach is is to integrate the sensor with the product must be developed detail analysis test result experience in the service environment must be there also lcm is uh, expected to continue to provide a technology pull for uh, incremental material development effort that are uh, needed to solve the 
married of the problems that arise as the sensors are incorporated into structures that must satisfactorily uh, satisfactorily endure the environment and the need for long sensor lifetime with the high reliability in operational environment requires sensor that are in that are uh, sensor in our that are inherently stable and have high operational reliability which may reduce the sensing solution that do not directly depend on the material for transduction and an example of turbine temperature sensing can uh, be relatable here a thermocouple technology is being eclipsed by a completely different sensor technology one that acts as a uh, black body cavity and uh, even though it acts as a black body cavity the uh, this technology has the material related to the limitation that will eventually restrict its application and the high temperature sensing technology of the future will measure the uh, measure the molecular sp uh, molecular spectra so the lcm and the smart materials have a similar sensor requirement fiber optical sensor both intrinsic and extrinsic uh, extrinsic, uh, extrinsic uh, application are becoming more uh, popular in and important nowadays and their potential has yet to be uh, fully exploited yet okay so chemical sensors possibly used in the construction with the fiber optics have a sig significant potential in future same way as we have other sensors uh, holding uh, enormous uh, importance in for future as well so in the long term the full potential of the intelligent material system cannot be achieved unless the appropriate sensor are available and existing sensor technology is often less advantageous than uh, required for many of the uh, envisioned smart structural applications however the major advances in control technology are required yet so uh, that was the second chapter we will keep today's class till here and in the next class we will start a new chapter if you have any doubts queries questions related to today's class or any other class please mention that in the comment section below if you have any suggestions for me if you want me to uh, make a video on particular topic please mention that in the comment section below as well and uh, if you have any feedback related to channel please mention the feedback whether it is positive or negative mention that in the comment section below as well i will be happy to answer as many as uh, i will be happy to answer all the comments as soon as possible and uh, i'll be seeing you next time with new playlist new video new lecture and uh, until then take care of yourselves eat eat well do well and uh, keep learning till then goodbye for now